This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. There we go again. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Monocast. Um, hello, Leon. How are you today? Oh, I'm pretty good. And you? Very good. Very good. Um, we have a pretty exciting episode episode in front of us. Later, later we'll talk to our friend Rodrigo from, from Brazil yeah. about Mordic in Brazil, which is a pretty exciting interview. Before we go there, we have a couple of other things. So let's let's kick it. All right, let's go. Um, as always, a bit of review, a bit, bit of follow-up to the previous episode makes sense. And uh, last time we talked to Alan Hartless about Mordic 3. Uh, status update there. It's still in the mating, making, obviously. Uh, the team hopes to have a beta out later this year. And we're preparing a blog post about Mordic 3. Maybe when we release this episode, it will be out. So that be, will be a, a blog post on Mordic.com. Do we have a date for the release already? Is it like the no, first no. quarter of two, uh, 2020 or...? <laughs> it will hopefully be in the first quarter, but no no specific date because that really depends on how things go. So if we have a beta this year, uh, that'd be great. And then um, still a lot of way to go and uh, quality needs to be great and so on. So probably not even January, uh, no. my expectation. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the blog post, the official blog post, is not yet out. Um, however, our friend, our friend uh, Jos Cordelia, uh, issued a blog post uh, in an opinion piece on the state of Mordic 3, which is good. So he talked about the fact that it's coming and also the, the challenges that he's seeing. Uh, so one one complaint that he has is the bad timing, which is pretty obvious, but but at this point we can only do the, the best about it. Yeah. Um, the other things that he sees are very good points, um, like um, what about all the PRs about uh, that, that are existing for Mordic 2? Is it all going to Dev0 or Dev0? <laughs> <laughs> um, or what, what about those? Because not, not taking those into account ha has a lot of problems. So there, there are issues that are not fixed there, there, those are features that are not making it and also uh, this is just waste of time for those who created the prs that will probably be frustrated if that's just dumped yeah uh, so th that's an excellent point or it's two points really um however as we know we have to do to deal with, with the circumstances and then the, the team really does its best and then if you hear this you're very welcome to contribute in, in terms of ways to to deal with the situation um to to handle the the legacy prs i i truly believe the first uh part on the way is, is reviewing all those prs do they still make sense uh what, what's the priority etc and just make sure, make sure to to take care of the most important ones um, is really valuable, and it's an easy starting point for contribute contributors to to go through the PRs and help sorting them out. Yeah. So that that's a bit of relief to to the to the M3 team, and uh, it's also a good uh, way to to dive in, into teamwork and, and into con uh, community contribution. Yeah. So, um, for everybody who is interested, uh, we talked about it in, in the last episode, episode two, and we'll keep talking about it. There are various Mordic teams, and um, all of those teams are happy for all sorts of, uh, thankful for all sorts of contribution. Oh, yes, we are. Good. Nonetheless, uh, Mordic 3 on the way, a blog post is coming, and um, yeah, stay tuned. So, next up is Marketing Underground, that, that's uh, a large expo marketing exposition here in, in Berlin, which we attended uh, earlier this month, right? And and Leon, you were On there. The 3rd of December, I think. That's right. Yeah. Um, we, we attended uh, with Eki and Thomas and Jackie and me. And it was a very, very interesting day. And we got a lot of new insights there. So um, we had a booth there and we were there to represent Mordic and marketing automation with Mordic. And 
what I found really interesting is the amount of people who don't know Mordic. And uh, of course, Mordic is not that popular yet. But um, even the amount of people who couldn't deal with marketing automation, so they heard what marketing automation is, like in the slightest space, but they didn't really know what it was. Yeah, yeah, I can confirm that. I mean, I mean there, there was thousands of people all from the marketing space, so a very good audience. Yeah. But most of them said, okay, I heard the word, the term marketing automation, but I'm not really sure about it. I should start doing that probably, but but I have other things on the list. Um, and it was cool to to promote the concept and, and also to promote the name of Mordic. Yeah. Um, so that alone was a really good success, I believe, even if people are not starting the very next day to use marketing automation in Mordic. The other thing, those who were more interested and more specifically interested, it all came from the marketing side and not from the technical side. Yeah. And um, that's really a different crowd than, than uh, those, those more nerdy people. <laughs> so even the concept of open source and what it means is, uh, is not crystal clear to everybody. There were like people who said, okay, cool, open source and contribution. Okay, so tell me the license cost. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you really get used, you have to get used to, to the way of thinking yeah. that people have in the beginning and to to address them where they are and not, not take everything for granted. So that was a good learning for us too. It was, yeah. yeah. The other funny thing was that, that right next door or next booth to us was a HubSpot agency, one of the larger ones in, in Germany and, and we're good friends with them and, and we had a really good time exchanging um, bits and pieces, yeah. like playing around with, with the UI of them and, and of, our, of ours and having a beer or two and everything. <laughs> So it was a fun day and a um, good deal of learning too. Yeah, next on the list is um, a conversation that I had with Thomas in the German flavor of this podcast and that was about cookie banners or rather cookie management tools. In that specific case, the, we, we had a large client or Thomas client <laughs> yeah. um, who had a serious problem because they had, had a intervention from, from the, the authorities over here, the data protection uh, authorities, where they did some review. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, the, the whole cookie banner, etc. stuff stuff all popped up, starting with the point that they had Google Analytics uh, with IP anony anonymization, etc. They said, no, no, that's no good, because Google can still see the IP of the clients uh, so the same story that we have with, with web funds yeah. it's better to self-host everything and uh, shield things from google even if you have the privacy shield and then the the contracts and all that it takes uh, that it takes to be compliant yeah better safe than sorry <laughs> yeah well yeah in that case it doesn't hurt but with, with cookie opt-in of course that does hurt yeah. So the one thing is is the legal situation that is really unclear even within the EU and even more complicated if you look around the world. So for, an, for a global website, um, it's pretty tricky to do the right thing. Yep. Um, and if you do the maximum, um, that means that you have the, a minimum of marketing data. So that's also not what you want. Nonetheless, this is not a legal podcast and I don't know for <laughs> sure. The only thing I know for sure that it's a tricky business and, and it's a inconsistent uh, legislation and, and, and rulings and, and everything with uh, the European court uh, making statements and national law being different from European law and, and the e-privacy not get, getting uh, forward and, 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 and all that. Yeah, it's a reliable source for... Uh like good information, quality information. If I'm in Germany, I have to follow this rule. Um, yeah, because it's just not not clear. There are laws, but but it's not clear how to, to implement those. There are lots of sources who try to explain the, the the different scenarios. So if you want to be on the safe side, you want to go this way. If you really adhere to, to the to the law, to, to, to the word, uh, pervadium, um, is that the word? Pervadium? I don't know. Um, ver verbatim, yeah, that's it. Um, 
then it's different and, and uh, if you could also take this point of view and, and act differently so no there's no real there's no one truth and so there's no not one source of uh information yeah that's a bummer yeah um yeah but, but I, I, i don't want to whine about this the the point is um in in the um inside of this project there was a big discussion about the right tool to choose for for a cookie opt-in and that they chose to use a commercial tool named CookieBot, which we can link to in the show notes. There's also a free version for that. So uh, CookieBot is like Tart en Citron for uh, Mautic, so the, the open source version? Yeah, in Mautic, Tart en Citron is, is really um, popular. Mm -hmm. um, CookieBot is, I, I, I don't really know, but it looks like it's a really sophisticated solution, <laughs> a sophisticated uh, solution. Mm -hmm. Um, can be really expensive if you have many URLs uh, to protect, but but um, whatever, it's one of those tools. Tato Citron is is I like it too. So yeah. let's let's link that also in the in the, in the show notes. Okay. Um, the other thing to to keep in mind is that that having that alone is is not I mean, you can do that, and and you may be okay on the legal side, but one goal is of course to maximize the opt in rate uh, by providing a good enough interface by by not pointing everybody directly to the uh, deny everything button yeah. <laughs> uh, but to, to to present it in a way that that uh, will d uh, lead people to the right decision without um, undermining gdpr and everything else of course yeah the the other thought i had or, or thomas and i discussed after uh, recording the german podcast was that tracking people anonymously so not involving any personal da data would, would mean that gdpr is not in, uh, not uh, not a thing in that mm -hmm. situation as long as people don't identify themselves by issuing a form and as long as you track don't, don't track the uh, ip address there's no personal data so thus there's no gdpr yeah. it may still has to have to do with e privacy in, in some some sort of form uh, there may be other legislation in, in in some countries but gdpr no and so one strategy would be to say okay we can at least um track the behavior of, of an anonymous contact in mordic mm -hmm. and act on that basis like like give them dynamic content uh, or targeted uh, content or focus items etc based on segments that we can build um, on, on the basis of their behavior so the classical thing user is obviously interested interested in product group a mm -hmm. so let's give them focus item or or a headline that that focuses on 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 this specific product group yeah if we don't have any data we can we can can't do segments but if we have uh, data on a, an anonymous contact that'd be great and that's help, helpful and we don't want to lose that and if the law doesn't require us to skip it why why should we skip it by by adding a cookie opt-in thing so given that the cookie opt-in is not required for anonymous users so if that was the case then we could we could track the data in in Mautic Uh, as long as it, the the guy or girl is is anonymous. Now, what if if this lead turns into uh, if, if this anonymous contact turns into a lead if if uh, the person decides to fill in a form, and at that point does not give us the the okay to uh, do uh, to, to process their personal data. Mm -hmm then we already have the tracking data and there's no uh, action or, or other thing to, to throw away that data. So what, what it would take at this point would, it would be a, a campaign action that says, or a, a form post action that says pur purge contact history or something like that. So we need to investigate a little bit more on, on the <laughs> legal situation. But if that's true, then we might uh, come up with a, a campaign action that says purge, purge history. And that might be a very helpful thing to work actively with with uh, anonymous contacts. Yeah, sounds like a pretty good solution to me. Yeah, well, there's so many ideas, of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we'll follow up with that. Good. Next up um, is more like like a bit of a hack or a nice tip, you may, you may call it. And that's Mordic as a link shortener. And I, I just 
uh, I'd like to tell you what we did here when, when, when we had the problem with Bitly, again with, with GDPR. So we were using Bitly as a URL shortener, as many people do in the world. And of course, that means that every click that people do goes through Bitly and they see the IP address and, and, and the, the, where they're coming from, where they're going to, which is not uh, GDPR compliant. Yeah. So you can either try to deal with that or just why not use Mordic for link shortening. So um, here's what we did. We um, put a, an additional very short domain on the main domain of the Mordic instance. Uh, just for convenience reason, and then added a, an Apache redirect that that would insert the word asset, and um, pretty much be done. Because in in Mautic we have those remote remote assets where you can give a remote URL, and uh, map a local URL to that. So you could have uh, my Mautic URL slash asset slash one two three colon any name. Yep. And that would, would redirect to the remote URL. And um, because we we don't like um, my modic URL slash asset, we, we just re replace it by a short thing without asset and then let Apache do the rest and be done. So we, we create a remote asset and um, can use the short URL that, that uh, is logically generated from that by the way uh, the only thing that matters in the in, in the url of that that asset is only the number the the one two three colon mm -hmm. something e everything behind that is thrown away and um it can be a vanity name or a short name or whatever oh nice to know yeah um so is that a good solution well if you do this short url thing once a week or so and that's what we do it's absolutely um a good solution it's it's not a big deal if you do it three times a day it's pr probably not convenient enough um so there are uh, are ideas what we could do better in mordic one thing would be one two three one two four one two five just having a sub uh, a sequential id is not such a great thing because it, it inspires people to to play around and to see what happens uh, the so one might use a hash instead of an idea id um, the other thing is get rid of the number entirely uh -huh. and just have a, a vanity name a unique vanity name that maps to the id internally so i i would have uh my my dot url slash short name yep. and um Mordic would look at short name and say, okay, that's ID number one, two, three, and, and be good. Yeah. So, and, and of course, that's more thing, uh, like like having a nice drop in, a day, drag and drop URL, uh, U, U, UI, yeah. um, <laughs> to make life e even easier for, for the users, but one step after the other. So, yeah, that's uh, ideas for better features to support the, the URL shortening, but, but it works already and is very valuable. Is there like an, a guide how to do it? No, no, no. But we, we, that's, that's really very simple. I, I can I can drop uh, two lines in, in the Apache redirect statement in, in the show notes. Yeah. Maybe we turn it into a knowledge base, base article too and link to that. Um, yeah, speaking of feature wishes, um, we also had the discussion uh, on the marketing underground really where, where people said, hey, uh, I don't know how to feed back into Mordic, as, as I said previously, and that in includes feature wish wishes. People have no idea about GitHub and, and uh, voting or, or thumbs up in GitHub, etc. Yes. Um, that's really just for tech people. And um, the other thing that exists uh, by now is, is uh, a forum category that's, uh, that's called Ideas and Feature Requests. But... Um, it's not well known. And I think that should be the only place going forward where feature requests are, are generated. And it can then move on to, to GitHub uh, issues or PRs or whatever. Yep. Um, so, so I'll link to that in show notes too. It's forummordic.org slash c slash ideas. And um, whoever has a feature request or feature idea uh, should place it there. Like always, make sure it's not existing already if so comment comment on the existing ideas rather than uh, doing duplicate entries yeah 
Uh, the other thing, there is a ton of uh, feature requests in, inside of GitHub, and that would be another nice starting point for any, anybody who is interested in contributing to skip th uh, to flip through those um, feature requests in GitHub and then transfer them to the forums if they still make sense. Good. Wow. Um, anything else before we do the interview? Yeah, that was one thing you told me about. Yeah, right. The, the, the Twitter account. In yeah. Twitter and yeah. I think Instagram. Right. Yeah, Instagram. Yeah, they're both dead, apparently. <laughs> so um, the official Mautic handle, like at Mautic, the channel is deleted and every every single news about Mautic will be distributed via the Acquia channel. So um, there was always like a bit of confusion between the at Mautic social media channels and the at community Mautic, or Mautic community. At Mautic community, yeah. yeah. It's because um, the at Mautic was the official Mautic Inc. And the at Mautic community was the Mautic org. So for I think the community. That's the, that's the important thing. When yeah. you say official, emphasis is on Inc. So the, the, the was com inc, yeah. com commercial part was, was at Mautic. And the, the open source part was at Mautic community. Right. And the reason behind that is that Obviously, uh, it's Acquia now, and so they seem to let go of the brand Mordic yeah. there. Um, and that's fantastic news, really, because when, when going forward, people talk about Mordic, it's clear what they mean. They mean, they mean the project, not the commercial uh, the part, not, not the company, Mordic Inc. Yeah, right. And so, so that's fantastic news i don't know anything about the backgrounds neither do i, I don't know why, why the facebook pay, page is still alive maybe there's a transition plan too maybe not i don't know but uh at least it's it's a a really good news for us yeah so um so much for now we'll now move on to the interview with rodrigo Demetrio from brazil um after the interview like always we talk about what's coming up in the mortic world and then wrap it up But, for, but now let's uh, go to um, Rodrigo, Rodrigo <laughs> who I talked to two days ago. So um, here's the recording. Yeah, Rodrigo. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Hey, Thank th 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 thanks for joining me today here. Um, I know your name has a Brazilian or Portuguese pronunciation, Rodrigo, Rodrigo, I, 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 I'm struggling, so excuse me, I, I'll just keep with uh, Rodrigo, okay? No, it's perfect, it's it, 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 uh, Rodrigo in Portuguese, but usually uh, American call Rodrigo, but uh, you can say in, in the way you want better. Uh, okay, so we now all know your name, your first name, uh, why don't you tell us your last name and a little bit of what you are doing and especially what you're doing with Mautic okay uh, first I, I would like to to thank you Eki and uh, thank you for for having me here so my, my name is Rodrigo Demetrio so I'm I started my career as a developer in 2001 it's a, a long journey but in the last eight nine years i i have been working in digital marketing so i'm not i'm not coding anymore the last eight nine years yeah so in the last four years i've been working only with with Mautic, only with Mautic products Mautic service and everything and with Mautic. Okay, cool. Very good. The reason I invited you today was uh, to tell us a little bit about Mautic uh, in Brazil, because as far as I know, it is still the largest community out there. And uh, on the other hand, it, it is really not very visible to the rest of the world. So I, I am very curious to learn more about that and to learn from you guys and, and girls. Um, so let's start with that how are people using Mordic in Brazil to your experience what is your role role uh, your personal role 
in, the, in it, but also how are people using it in general? Yeah, it's it's a kind of uh, because we have one of like you said one of the largest community, but our our members uh, uh, they 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 are not so used to get involved, uh, engaged in in all more global communities. Uh, I don't know exactly why. I think probably one of the first reasons uh, it's the language. So uh, uh, and the second reason, because yesterday I asked in our Brazilian community in our forum on Facebook uh, exactly this question. Uh, I asked uh, why why do you guys think uh, we don't have so many Brazilians interacting and answering and, and, and engaging in multi global community. So one of the reasons they 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 yeah, it, it come up it was a uh, language and the second one was I was not expecting <laughs> they said because usually uh, according to, to their pers perspective global community market global community it has a lot of friction you know a lot of uh, debate a, a lot of discussions uh, uh, sometimes uh, this discussion, this conversation become a kind of more, because, you know, I, I've been working with open source and, and developer uh, uh, many years, so I, I, I'm a kind of user to to understand many developers are a kind of, not so polite many times, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. I was not expecting this answer, but one of the answers in our forum yesterday, it was because they, they many users understand uh, they they have to be like more professional, more how can I say more uh, a kind of our community don't allow uh, um, unprofessional comments or mm -hmm. or or a kind of newbie how can I say newbie comments about Mauric. So and the third point it's because uh, they believe uh, because. Uh, I've been stimulating uh, marketing conversations in our 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 forum. Uh, of course, uh, the mostly of our interaction is too about code, about installation, and, and and technical issues. But I've been stimulating uh, more marketing, and all my 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 interaction with our Brazilian community it was in order to put more marketers in our community. So. Uh, they they said they feel a kind of uh, uh, so technical post in our global community. Mm. So I can I can say we have we have three uh, these uh, reasons. One because of uh, language, obviously. The second uh, they feel a kind of they they feel they needed to like they have uh, concerns about to post and and got a, a, a bad feedback. And the third. Uh, and they feel uh, the majority of the content are uh, are so technical. They feel uh, so. I, I can say probably are those three uh, these three uh, reasons for that. Wow, wow, that that is exciting <laughs> insights. Really, language. Okay, that's to be expected. The other ones, that's definitely a lot of. Uh, thoughts and a lot of learnings out of that. And I, I think some things to, uh, to make different, some things to just make more accessible and, and uh, to make it transparent to people where they can feel free and, and not be shy and, and so on. So yeah, we need to work on that definitely. But let's uh, back up a little bit and let me ask you, who is the community in your in your Facebook group and in your um, surroundings, uh, are those uh, users? Are those agencies, uh, freelance marketers? Who who is the community? When I find I find it fascinating that you got those answers so quickly and so openly. It's that's really great. But as a starting point, who who is it? 
Okay, that is a great question. Uh, one of the reasons I think it's our community is so large here, I can say we have two big factors. One, one factor is we have a, a big competitor, a company called rdstation.com. rdstation.com. They are a kind of a hub spot, a cup. A copycat, a, a, a HubSpot copycat here in Brazil. So they created, they they created a model exactly uh, uh, similar to HubSpot, and they got a lot of investment the last two three years, more than six. Uh, six million dollars, uh, and uh, and they have today more than twelve thousand clients here in Brazil in Latin America. So they are huge today. They they have a big conference uh, with more than two thousand uh, 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 attendees. So one of the reasons is because they are putting a lot of content, a lot of information in digital marketing. In, industry here so when people they started uh, uh, searching about that they they get to know about Mauric during this uh, uh, search journey oh. and Mauric uh, how Mauric uh, like we know we don't have contract we don't have a, 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 a contact limits a send limits and uh, many of them they 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 start to use Mauric because of that because RD station they are creating a lot of content about about marketing automation, they are creating a lot of uh, many conferences uh, uh, over all Brazil and Latin America, and that is one of the reasons. The second reason is because we have a guy here, a marketer, and m m many others, but this guy called Erico Rocha, they, uh, he, he is a kind of a, a entrepreneur, marketer, ambassador, so he's, he has a, a methodology, I, I don't know if you know, uh, Jeff Walker. Jeff Walker is a, a digital marketer. So this guy uh, basically he 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 got that uh, 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 launch formula, launch formula, and 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 he created here in Brazil, and he has a huge community as well. So we are living here in Brazil a kind of a, 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 a blossom a, a kind of a, 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 a hot moment you know around a, a digital marketing so everybody's looking for new techniques a, new platforms new tools and Mauroki it's inside of all these these a, a combination of things so but asking your question about uh, what are the typical users uh, uh, mark users here i can say we have we have agencies uh, probably agencies are the the top group here because here uh, at Partic we we attend uh, we have a lot of agency as 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 customers here we have a, a lot of agencies here the second largest uh, are the entrepreneurs the uh, uh, people who are creating their information products their learning products their online uh, course their online training so they uh, they are uh, they are probably our second lar largest group and the third I I could say we have enterprise company so uh, here in Partic we, we 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 have a couple of client international clients like Shell uh, like Enel a big I Italian energy company they they have a lot of uh, 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 government contracts here uh, and because because they can't they can't fit inside like RD station or HubSpot or, or Marketo because they have a complex marketing structure so they need just a, a piece of platform like the Mark campaign uh, builder or, uh, and, and so they put Mark inside there and a lot of other um, uh, tools uh, so I can say 
we have these, these, these three groups, and I have one special group, uh, banks and and Bitcoin and Bitcoin companies. They I I didn't know all these financial companies. They have to to follow strict uh, regulation. Uh, I don't know uh, they have to follow but I I didn't know they 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 couldn't install they couldn't use anything uh, in uh, in cloud uh, like they 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 couldn't keep like all their contacts on on Salesforce or some some SaaS solution so they have to to put everything inside their own server in order to get some kind of uh, certification some 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 high quality certification so we got a, a meetings with Sodexo uh, and other uh, bank and Bitcoin institution because of that so I can say we have uh, these four big groups agency entrepreneurs enterprise company and some kind of payment companies who are looking for to, to, to protect their data Wow, that's really, really cool. Um, and it really sounds li like you're not doing just a little bit of Mautic, but really bringing the Mautic USPs to, to its best. Now, I would like to get back to the community for a second. You just gave a perfect example of communication within the community, like you asked the questions about the, the global interaction, and you got the feedback. Um, what, what else is going on in the community? What are people using it for? Like technical exchange, newbie questions, advanced things. Uh, uh, best practice stuff, or are you doing a lot of physical meetups too? So, so what what formats are you using? Facebook groups, meetups, uh, what have you? And and what what is the content? Okay, perfect question. Uh, during our first year, uh, be, uh, because I've started working with Mautic in 2015, it was. Um, a kind of a different start because in one year before I uh, I, I have been I, I was working at where I had a digital agency so I I but I wanted to create something in marketing automation a marketing automation product so uh, we had developed a kind of landing page creator but I didn't monetize this product, so I failed. Uh, I, I, I had spent, I think, around a half of an apartment in one year uh, with developers, designers, rent, and things, uh, I think like that. So I was decided to sell digital service again when, at the end of 2014, I got a message from Google Alerts from Mautic. I was monitoring, I was, I was monitoring marketing automation keyword so uh, in that moment I bought the domain mauric.com.br our Brazilian domain and I sent a message to David just uh, saying oh uh, 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 don't worry I bought your domain I, I, I'm not a, a interest in uh, to resell I just would like to help community to help to translate Mautic website so in two days David uh, David he answered with uh, Joomla Joomla credentials but it was a surprise <laughs> I was I was not I was not expecting so fast I would be uh, like uh, 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 participating so fast so after that we created uh, David asked to create our community here so I'm, 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 I'm glad he, he, he suggested that. So I, I've created a Meetup São Paulo here in Brazil, a Meetup São Paulo, and our Facebook group. And, and, and our Meetup in, in Meetup.com basically are physical Meetups. We, we, we uh, get together once a month 
uh, a small group, eight, ten. Sometimes we invited some big partners, some media company. So uh, we had a meetup. We got uh, 40, 40 people, and and Facebook Facebook group basically it's. Uh, only digital. I've I tried to change our Facebook to um, a forum, a, a, a group, or something more more uh, 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 appropriate to manage uh, groups. But usually, all the users they love to use Facebook group. Like you, you know, it's it's easy. They already are inside. So basically, we have these two two. To community, so and we 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 had some guys who who who, who had some big big uh, audience. Like we have a member called Kawe, and he he has a a hosting company, a a, a big hosting company. So he invested in some influencers and some YouTubers influencers to promote Mark. What was great too because uh, sometimes Mark it's so a kind of a, a niche. Uh, 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 we uh, always we, we are trying like uh, always to to do something not just for for technical guys because I I I feel sometimes all our clients like uh, small or big companies uh, uh, or agency usually uh, our clients who uh, is in charge usually it's a guy who has a, a kind of history with open source industry a kind of uh, like we have a big client here a uh, 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 a network of malls, a malls network, and they're huge. They have uh, more than one billion in revenue. So, but their digital leader, it, it, it's a guy from from Drupal, from Drupal community. So, uh, what I, I realized uh, uh, some days ago, it's basically. Uh, one point in common in almost our our, our clients, they are digital marketer, their director or CEO or whatever their uh, position. They they have some kind of a relation. Uh, they are more technical marketers than that kind of madman madman marketer. You know, so so. I don't know if I I, I answer no, your, very, your question. Nick. No, very very good. That was really comprehensive. One thing I understand is that the concept of open source is pretty well known in Brazil, at least with the people that you are talking to, the, the clients, and that that is obviously really helpful. It's not always the case, depending on where you are. Um, I have another question, and that is. Um, uh, what what is the public? Uh, on what level is the public the the, the recipients of, of the messaging? Uh, is everybody used to very intense uh, marketing messaging, uh, email nurturing, etc.? Are you using Mordic primarily for email for in the first place? Are you doing other things like SMS, text messages? Uh, or others? Are you doing a lot, a lot of things online in social media? Um, so, how is it used, and how well is is the Brazilian public used to that sort of communication? So, so in other words, what does what is the market looking like? The end market. Great. Well, that it's a a great question because one of our competitors here, RD Station, and uh, it's uh, it, it's common. <laughs> Uh, come up question in our forum what uh, are the difference between Mauric, Marqueiro, HubSpot RD Station and Lead Lovers, we have uh, another one called Lead Lovers here mm -hmm. so basically uh, what I can say because uh, the other platforms like HubSpot they sell uh, their value proposition it's uh, it's all in one you know it's all uh, you can publish on social media you can do uh, uh, everything related to your digital marketing 
uh, at the same platform. So what we know about Mark uh, uh, exactly uh, what I, I, I'm selling, uh, the value proposition I'm selling using Mark here, it's it's uh, you don't need to like to get a, a remote control your your TV remote control like with so many buttons. So you just press uh, uh, to to raise the volume or change channel, and you have a lot of uh, tons of other buttons y y you are not using. So instead of to pay uh, one thousand dollars monthly, uh, eight hundred dollars monthly, you could use just one feature and 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 or a, a couple of features you already know you're gonna use but uh, here in our client in our community I can see uh, people uh, ask more about email SMS and WhatsApp and, and and social media integration so basically when they 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 see uh, Instagram plugin, Facebook plugin. Our our audience they they understand marketing and publish on these channels. So so I say uh, 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 so there is a kind of uh, expectation in our audience because they compare Mark with HubSpot, what it's possible with HubSpot. Uh, but now with our Mark users, uh, uh, people who are using Mark. Um, 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 more time so they understand that and they are using basically email SMS and they are asking a lot about WhatsApp uh, what kind of uh, integration uh, uh, if it, there's a, somehow how to connect WhatsApp with Mark so I can say I can say uh, the majority of, of users they are using just for email and we have a, a small group, a few people uh, who are using SMS and and a kind of uh, not standard or uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, modern ways. How can I say a, a different way to connect and send mo uh, 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 WhatsApp messages? So I would like, of course, I I, I, I always promoting other Mark futures like now company we are just using uh, email as well so but I can say like last year I I had opportunity to speak in uh, in a in a conference here so I was talking with some guys about the other platform the, the other marketing automation platform so in in they said uh, in uh, they are using just email as well. Basically, they they said to me, uh, ninety percent of the other platforms, like I said before, uh, they are using email. So, so for me, it seems a kind of we have a kind of marketing, um, a marketing. Uh, Value proposition, or oh, you can do uh, whatever you want inside in, at the same platform, but uh, they can afford marketing department or, or 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 agency to manage all these channels. So basically, uh, I can say uh, today we have around 100 clients uh, at Portchik. Uh, so I can say for sure uh, inside all the 100 clients we have. Uh, the majority, uh, like seventy percent, use just email. Uh, and, and the second, uh, uh, they they are they, they would like to use more WhatsApp. I think today more than 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 social media. Today, I think our community it's comfortable. It's comfortable, but it's it's used to understand that Mark it. It doesn't have uh, uh, social media posting. Uh, what I always say in our our sales sales pitch it's Mark will will develop new features and not like features you can you can get for ten dollars uh, twenty dollars like a hot switch or buffer or something like that. Uh, so Mark it's investing their efforts and thinks one 
one-to-one -one and one-to-one -one communication instead of one-to-many like uh, posts on on a, a fan page and things like that. Uh, so I can say uh, there is this kind of uh, movement around marketing automation, but we are still uh, using basically email and yeah. Okay. No, no, lovely. I think that's uh, that's a reality in 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 most cases around the world, and also for for the the expensive commercial guys, people pay horrendous licenses and still use the same subset that they can handle. Yeah. Before I let you go, um, uh, in your meetup group alone, I know you're more than a thousand uh, people, uh, at least registered for the meetup. Do you have any clue how large the, the community is in, in Brazil in total? Well, that's a great question because uh, we have uh, one of our uh, milestones at Portic, it was because I've met Luis. Luis, it's my partner, Luis Eduardo. He's, he's, he's engaged in many um, Maoric uh, 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 things, like uh, because my first business model was was selling, reselling. Uh, that time it was allied. Yeah, uh, uh, Maoric, uh, it, it had allied, and I've become a partner. So I was reselling there their market host I remember it was $12 monthly so I had a, 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 a commission but after one year in 2016 they they, they got an investment and they, they changed everything uh, so they started charging $500 what uh, probably I have some clients they could pay for that but my model was uh, completely uh, 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 oriented for a small business and and five hundred dollars and when we we change for real our currency so that's huge so that is it's it's uh, uh, almost uh, almost three uh, uh, minimum wage so so I, I I said to to David I I I need to do something different so I created Partic and uh, but I'm not a uh, so technical guy anymore. I've been like in more in digital marketing industry. So I invited Luis, Luis Eduardo, my partner, to to become my partner. So that time he, he was working as developer in a big universe. I couldn't afford like to pay the same salary and he's his his dad. He 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 has kids. So I I I I need to be like a, a serious. So uh, I said to Luis, oh, I, I will try to get some contracts and we'll, we'll see if I, I can get some contracts. And after six months, I, I got exactly the same uh, amount to pay the same salary. So Luis uh, quit the job and we started Partick uh, in 2017. And Luis, he created a... Uh, uh, Mauric Docker uh, uh, repository on GitHub, and today we we have uh, we have over over one one point six million downloads on a Mauric Docker repository. So in Brazilian numbers, I can say uh, I. I, I know two guys, two two big guys who host Mark here. One is Mahost dot dot C A. Uh, uh, uh a friend of mine who who has a a, a Canadian host and he, he said to me he he had more than 1000 mark installation there i had another friend uh, uh, he said he he's running more than 500 so i can say uh, probably we have more than 5000 problem users but in our community we have 8 uh, 7.2 thousand in our Facebook group and more one thousand in our meetup. So uh, of course we have in both uh, same same people in, in both communities. So I can say we have uh, for sure five thousand users uh, uh, 
actively users uh, in our community for sure. Um, I think it, our numbers uh, are, are are around that. Okay, cool. What, what about the the surrounding countries, the Spanish-speaking countries? Is, is there any contact to those? Is Mordic public there as well? If any idea? Yeah, I've uh, we have two clients uh, in Colombia and one in Uruguay. So uh, we are not publishing. Uh, many content in Spanish. I, I would love to, to, to do more. I know, I know uh, there are some guys in Spain, uh, in Barcelona. They are promoting uh, Maori content, uh, but here we don't have so much a, a, a connection with our our Latin Americans here. But uh, for sure, uh, there are some movement in, in there. But uh, today. We have only three clients uh, in Power Chick who are uh, the other clients from Latin America. And uh, I, I don't know exactly. Uh, I, I was in the last Acquia, Acquia event here, and I met two guys from Uruguay, uh, and and they said they are creating some movement there. But I, I don't know much like numbers and what's happening uh, exactly there. Okay, fair enough. Anyway, um, as you know, I am pretty active in the in the global Mordic community team. Yeah, you and, are, you are. <laughs> and uh, so I'm looking forward to find better ways to reach out to everybody in Brazil and, and give them access to the global community and, and also uh, leverage that, that great crowd of Mordic lovers and, and uh, motivate people to, uh, to connect internationally. Uh, and overcome all the ob obstacles and also to learn a lot from you guys. I, I think that you uh, you already mentioned a lot of things today and uh, there's certainly more to learn and uh, to getting closer together and to network and interconnect is, is uh, uh, one of the great strengths of open source. So Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, it's so great. Yeah, it's so great to belong to something uh, bigger than was. I, I really uh, love that. Uh, that it's for sure one of the reasons. And you are. Uh, I, I, I would love to be like you, like to, to get involved. So uh, uh, because today, I'm just uh, working to keep our bills. Paid, you know, so I I really loved what uh, uh, David created because today I'm paying my my kids' bill, my rent, my 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 whole life, and we have five people working at Portic with families, and we are paying our bills, uh, all our bills because of Mauric. I'm so I'm so I'm. So, so grateful for everything what's happening and I, I, I would love to give more sometimes I just I was worried to pay salaries and everything it, it just have to work and I, I would love just I, I, I love to see guys like you who are working hard to keep everything uh, like like working and and, and, and and getting better each day. And that's exactly the beauty of open source, that, that your contribution is valuable just, just like mine, and uh, there's a lot of potential for everyone. Okay, um, Rodrigo, wh where can people find you online? You, you've mentioned PowerTech. What is the URL of that? Okay, it's uh, powertick.com, uh, P-O-W-E-R-T-I-C.com, powertick.com, and uh, yeah, I got just the, the mark less free letters and powertick.com, and my my email is gmetro uh, at powertick.com, D-E-M-E-T-R-I-O at party.com so we have a chat and I, I I try to answer all I have a Twitter it's it's a uh, 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 Rodridem, it's R O D R I D E M E. So I'm open to 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 talk with anyone about Mark. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time and, and all the insights you gave me. Talk to you soon. Take care. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.
Well, that was deep in science. Oh, thank, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much again, Rodrigo. And I think we have a lot of learn, a lot of learnings, really, and we should absolutely make sure to uh, get the best out of this information and uh, make things happen on the global side oh, yes. in order to have a really strong local side, too. Okay, Doug, um, moving on. Um, all we have to do now is events, what's coming up in the Mordic world. And, yeah. of course, uh, the holidays are coming up. <laughs> And hopefully a beta is coming up, as we said. And um, for actual events, I mentioned last time that we intend to have a page on the mordic.org where events are listed. Yeah. And guess what? We now have a page. Oh, finally. Can, can you guess the URL? Um, slash events? Yeah, mordic.org slash events. Wow. <laughs> Magic, eh? Yeah, so uh, Ruth did a good job in, in creating that page and uh, starting to fill it up. Mm -hmm. So if, if you have any events, that, be it one time or regular, be it online or, or physical events and meetup, uh, drop her a line on Slack or elsewhere. That's Ruth, our community manager, yeah. and she'll put it on the list. Also included are the community team phone calls or, or Jitsi calls. Yeah. <laughs> um, there, there's a, the, the team meeting online of the marketing team or so, and that would be listed here. Yeah. So you can find it all on mordic.org events. There's nothing specific that, that we should or that we need to talk to, uh, about today. No. So um, in other words, the biggest event is now Christmas celebration for, for myself and um, New Year's Eve coming up. By New yeah. Year's Eve, I hope we'll also be preparing for the next episode. So we wish you all a wonderful holiday time. Yeah. And uh, we talk to you in two weeks. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody.